All right, here we go, episode four. Hey, everybody, this is Captain Jack. I'm one of the Minecrafters, and I am building a self-sustaining nuclear power plant. Um, when we last left off, we had just completed the breeder reactor, and we had filled this thing here. And before I go any farther, I meant to show this in the last episode, which turned out to be uh, way longer than I originally intended. Um, I'm just going to have you take a look at what this actually looks like inside the reactor planner so if I take these I'm gonna um, I'm gonna rebuild this really quickly I just want you guys to see how this looks inside of here okay and then when I add in more quad uranium cells you see it never changes full cycle and the more that I and here it still does not change and there we go um, it stays it stays as a full cycle the entire time it's telling me that this will put out a total of 872 million EU it will put out 4360 EU per tick and it will run the full two hours 46 minutes and 46 seconds okay so this is the design inside the reactor if I were to remove one of these LZH condensators let's say maybe this one over here you can see that um, it's just, it's gonna melt down really, really quick. Um, so this design is, which is not my design, by the way. Let me just throw that out there as a disclaimer. Um, this design is, I don't think you can fit more cells or quad cells inside a reactor or get more out of it than this design. If you are playing Tech at Light now, uh, Feed the Beast, I think, is a different story. Um, when you get into Greg Tech and things like that. So we're just going to go back into our game here, now that you've seen that. Um, what the goal will be of this episode, and I trust it will be uh, shorter than the last one, um, is to get this breeder reactor going. Now, it works fine right now. Um, the problem is we have not unlocked the full potential of the breeder reactor. These isotope cells inside of here are regenerating at a pace that is not conducive to uh, a self-sustaining reactor. So in order to unlock the full potential of the breeder, we're going to need to cook up breed the breeder. And that's just a term that I use. Uh, it's not really a real thing. Um, I'm going to take some quad cells. And what I mean by cooking it up is just um, I want to heat it up to a, a high temperature. Now this can sustain a high temperature, this one cannot. Um, and the higher the temperature of the breeder, the faster the cells will recharge. So we want this at a high heat. And I think what I'm going to have to do here is I am going to Oh, this is going to be a tight squeeze. <laughs> I'm going to try to hook up that um, reactor monitor. Where is it? Remote thermal monitor. Okay. This is not going to be easy because of the amount of space that I've actually left myself. And turning it off is really not going to be that huge of a deal, but I, I can put something here. Okay. So I'm going to rearrange these just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this over here which is not quite going to reach there. I'm gonna put that there. And I think if I put a cover strip, it won't activate anything that I put here, but also I can I can put this here, okay? Now this is going to be I need a screwdriver. Okay, give me the screwdriver. Thank you. Okay. This is going to be the manual cut off switch. Now this, uh, this is going to operate um, a little bit weird because, oh, it's heating up. Don't want that. Don't want that yet. Um, this is going to have to be turned on at all times in order to turn the reactor off when I need to. So it's going to be opposite of the way you might imagine. And what I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to install this remote thermal monitor, which... Let me see. I 
think I can get away with putting it here. But I would really like to see what the monitor is showing. So where can I put that? You know what? Let's do this. Let's let's remove this. Okay? And we'll have the automatic uh, throw off switch. We'll put that somewhere else um, simply because I want to see the heat of the breeder at all times. Um, so let's get some paver and put that back over there or brick. And what this is going to do, I'm going to need um, an AND gate and a receiver and a transmitter, some wire, and I'm also going to need power. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Trixie Hobbitses. Um, oh, shoot. Um, the problem I'm trying to work out right now is um, getting power to this device here. Um... Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Um, I have a really wacky solution to this in my head right now. And it's going to require something that I definitely was not planning on putting in this facility, okay? Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. All right. What I'm what I'm thinking of is a tesseract. And I don't want this to suck up too much power. Um let's get a BC producer and I see to HV consumer, where are you? Consumer and an energy bridge. Now, uh, I haven't thought this through too much, so I'm sorry if this doesn't actually end up working out in the end. Um, let's see, okay. What in the deuce was that? Okay. So we have an IC2 HV consumer energy bridge the BC producer um, and I'm not sure if a tesseract directly on there will do some will, will help but put a redstone energy conduit you see I do have I do have power flowing out um, I'm gonna put a empty redstone energy cell and then I'm gonna put a tesseract next to it and I'm gonna name this um, we're gonna name this breeder breeder shut off we're gonna just do channel 10 okay oh where did it go breeder shut off add this channel it'll be channel 10 okay um, Okay, very good. Now, what that's doing is just draining. Well, I don't know what the heck it's doing. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, how is it getting power from anything? Okay. Um, I don't know if this can actually take... No, it can't. What what am I stupid? Oh boy. <laughs> okay, hold on. I might actually be able to do this. This is so ghetto. I don't want to have to turn this energy back. Let me see. Oh, there's no electric engines. In tech light. Okay, so if I remotely transport build craft power to one place to another, um, it goes through a tesseract. It's going to need to come out and get reconverted. Oh, this is p 
puke. Kill me. This is not. This is a. This is a waste of resources. But I'm doing it anyway. All right. So what we kind of need is the opposite here. Um, we need an I. Actually, you know, what I can just do is no. I'm not going to do that. These things can't take any more than. They can't take any more than low voltage, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to do an energy bridge. Where is that? Okay, energy bridge. BC, BC consumer. This needs to change to BC consumer. Okay, I'm going to put the Tesseract here. Oh, this gives me this gives me zero space to make a freaking logic circuit. All this crap. Um, in theory, <laughs> it's green. Um, check. Done. Okay. What a wacky solution to that problem, okay? And I did all of that because I didn't want to see a wire <laughs> going in an uneven pattern. I am probably never gonna or never gonna look at this crap again up here, which is fantastic. Oh, you know what? Okay. I'm I'm finding solutions to all of these problems across the board. Um all right, so we we've supplied power to our what you call it? Where's that red, 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 red wire? It must have been on page two. Here we go. I'm gonna throw this here, and that signal shouldn't um, turn anything on or off. I'm gonna take a wireless transmitter, put that there, change it to ten. Okay. So this is gonna emit a signal as long as it's under, let's say. We're gonna do max heat eighty four thousand melting seventy one. So let's let's do seventy thousand. Right around seventy thousand, okay. So this is going to emit a signal when it's over seventy thousand. And if it's over seventy thousand, actually just for the heck of it, I'm gonna do six nine nine six zero. And I think you'll see why I do that in a minute. Okay, so that's going to transmit a signal to 10 anytime it's under that amount. Great. Okay, here's the scary part is turning it on. And in order to turn it on, I'm going to need to um, grab one of these remote sensor kits. I'm going to need to ping the reactor, grab a card, and when I put this in here, it's going to know where the reactor is. And it knows something. Oh, 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 hold on. Emit when, emit when under. Okay. So it's going to emit when under this amount here. So it's, um, it's going to shut off when it's over. Okay. That's, that's, that's the proper way to do it. And I am really counting on this thing to shut off when it's over for me. So... We're about to either make or break this entire operation. Um, the reason why it's building heat is because I have an inefficient design inside here. I've replaced some of the depleted isotope cells with quad uranium cells. And these things, ooh, there we go, got a little fire. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's hardly using any of that stuff. Um, we're at 24,000. This is building up heat. It's moving towards that... Um, 70,000 mark that I've set it at and once it hits that it's going to automatically shut off okay I would like to install an automatic um, like an intervening signal that will shut this off no matter what and that's where an AND gate will come in handy the problem is I don't know if I've left myself enough space for an AND gate um, unless I put stuff on top of here which is a possibility I suppose I just don't want to risk sending a signal to the tesseract because that will turn off which will cause even bigger problems let me check on this okay I 
it's okay. Don't worry about the fire. It's all good. It's all good. Alright, we're at 51,000. Um, I'm going to lower this threshold, actually. Let's bring it back up to 70. What am I doing? Back up to exactly 70,000. I'm going to drop it by... I'm going to drop it to 6,500. And that should shut off in just a second. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. Automatically shut off. Okay. So... Oh boy, I just don't want to have stuff getting torched all over the place. Alright, now that we've reached our optimal temperature, I'm going to replace these like so. Okay, um, We actually got a new depleted isotope cell, and that is going to be the next project because I want to start off with X amount of uranium and have it make all these cells. I'm sorry, my mic was a little bit weird there. Okay, so I've changed it back to a safe design, uh, one that is not going to heat up any further because of the condensators and the alignment of the cells. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add... See, I, I changed it by 40. I lowered it by 40 points for that exact reason, because that bothers me. It says 65,040 heat. And if you put it 40 less, it ends up exactly at 65,000, which is what I want. But I'm a psychopath. I'm okay. Um, we're going to raise it by 100 heat. That's going to turn the reactor back on. Okay. And that's all good. I might actually be able to... Um, I wonder if I can just put the emergency cutoff switch right here. That's that's a no, because that will not override that signal. Okay, I need to override it from, from somewhere else. But we'll deal with that for right now. If I want to turn the reactor on and off, I'll just adjust these settings here. Um, for now, or actually let's take a look at how much faster this is producing cells because you're going to notice a big, oh, they're all gone, okay. So these are these are going to be hammering through. They're ticking down um, seven, eight, uh, about a hundred a tick. So it's it's going to start um, producing a ton of these. Let's lower that back down. We're going to shut off this. Um, when the reactor was on, it should have supplied power to fill this here, and this is using an extremely small amount of power. That thing really doesn't take hardly any power to run upstairs. Um, it just took a a wacky fix to get the power up there without breaking everything, okay? Um, let's check our MFSUs. This is going to need to actually stay running, okay? This is being tapped by what exactly? I'll assume it's being tapped by the ME system. Um, so it, would, it will be in my best interest to keep this system keep this system running all right that's draining at a fairly decent clip let's turn it back on real quick just for the sake of the power anyway okay and let's see let's see what this is doing okay it's making way more power than it's actually consuming this one's have this one's struggling because that one's emptying first. Okay, all right. Well, well, so far we're okay. Um, if you guys spot any problems, actually, never mind. I'm releasing these videos too quickly for anybody to spot problems. Um, all right. So that'll be my remote remote cutoff switch. I'll just use that for now. What my plan was to put the um, AND gate in the basement and just have it linked back to a remote shut off switch on the side or something just somewhere else here but it doesn't really matter I guess I can I can be satisfied with with what we've done so far okay um, so let's cover this up because I don't want to see this anymore and make sure that it's the same over here so 
I'm a lumberjack and I oh I swore off singing. Um this here. I don't think this is the same. But in any case. Okay, put that there. This will come out to here. Just like that. Alright. Alright, looks like we have symmetry. No, that's a lie. Hold on, put this here. Okay, there we go. I am satisfied temporarily, okay? Breeders running, filling up all of our everything. And the things that are using power right now are the Tesseract for this, which is negligent, and this, which is not at all negligent. Okay, so we have a breeder fired up. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to program our molecular assembly ch chamber to take uranium that we put in there and automatically turn it into um, depleted isotope cells. Uh, whenever we deposit uranium into this thing, we're just going to have it sucked straight in um, because uranium is really only good for uranium rods. So there would be no reason not to do that in any system that you make. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to take, I'm going to spawn in some uh, some uranium here, near depleted uranium cell, which is what we're going to make off the bat first. Um, we're going to program this to make tin. And one thing I do want to do first is make sure that I have the right pattern. That UU matter is going to create tin dust. Where is it? Should I, I knew I should have gone the other way. <laughs> okay. Um, it's going to create tin dust 30252. Okay, you can use tin dust to make tin, which is 30247. Okay, so 30247 is the one I want. Tin. Let's go 30247. This is it here. Okay. Um, and then we're going to get some blank patterns, blank emmy patterns. And we're going to start encoding some stuff. Okay. So I'm going to put this here. And it's going to need to know how to make empty cells with some tin. Okay. Um, the system's going to have to know how to make tin dust. So I'm going to program this. It's going to need to know how to make copper dust. So I'm going to program that. Okay, so now we got tin dust. Now uh, we're going to need tin ingots. So, I mean copper ingots, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to take copper dust. We're going to check its use and make sure we have the right item code. It's 30248. We don't want the other one. Um, see how there's 30261.64, and there's actually three. Um, so this is the this is the correct one. We want to make sure you uses the correct pattern. Um, we're going to program the assembly chamber. Actually, no, we don't need to program the assembly chamber. We just need it to shoot the stuff into the thing. Okay, so I'm going to put these in here so we can see what we got. I'm holding shift. Oh, super. Super idea, Captain Jack, making two tins. Why did that not come out properly? That's copper. I just didn't encode it. I just encoded it wrong. Okay. Okay, so there we go. Now we got... Is there something that I am missing here? What is going on? You, you? That's the copper recipe? That's the tin recipe. Copper, tin, okay? Crafts 10 copper dust with 3 UU matter. That's the proper one right there, and just for the heck of it, I'm going to make another one. There we go. I don't know why that didn't work. I'll probably figure it out when I replay the episode. Okay, so it knows how to make tin, copper dust, um, empty cells. It's also going to need to know how to make... Um, the near depleted uranium cells, so we're going to have to take refined iron, 
or find uranium, excuse me. Um, we're going to have to put it here. We're going to have to surround it by eight empty cells. Like this, okay. We're going to encode it. Okay, so it's going to know how to make that. And we're going to make the system automatically craft these every single time. That gets pushed into the system. Okay, how's our breeder doing here? We're not overheating, which is a good thing. Um, this this little machine is actually a quite a marvelous little device. Let's check our MFSUs. Here we go. Here we go. So we're building up a lot of power. A lot of power. And uh, the goal will be to have this run the factory and the um, reactor back there to fill up the real MFSUs that are going to be used outside in the world by the villagers, so to speak. Okay. Okay. Oh, let's keep doing this. I'm getting sidetracked here, and i got to check the time because the last episode went way long. Um, what else do we need? Okay, when we put uranium in here and we want to automatically inject uranium, okay, here we go. All right, so let's start building these because now we've gotten to the point where we're going to have to start using our raw materials to make useful things that we will actually need in the construction of our reactor, okay? go. We're just going to tunnel into here and break a torch. We're going to get a little bit more glass fiber cable and we're going to run this down. I don't see. See, I'm not sure if cable or if these machines will use less power if you give if you give them less or if they just use less of the power that's available somebody might have to clarify that if I run into problems later on where this won't keep up where its power demands won't keep up we might have to do something with that so one of you one of you subscribers make sure you keep a keen eye out and remember that for when I'm screwing this factory up later all right there. Somehow that's better in my mind. Um, so we have our machines. They're going to sit up top here. They're going to get wired up. We're going to have machines over here. Not too sure if we're going to actually use all the all of this all of this space here. Because you really don't need that many machines. Um, Captain Corp was overkill in a lot of ways. A lot of ways. All right, let's throw a torch down here. I guess I don't have to worry about creepers, but in any case, here we go. Why did this one? Oh, I'm just delusional. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. What is going on? Anyways, I'm freaking out because it's not even, but that's okay. I'll deal with it. I know it's not good. Oh no, there we go. It's the same. It's the same. Crisis averted. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to avoid a potential crisis and break those because I certainly do not want HV power th getting thrown into uh, machines that can't take that much power. And what I'm going to do, I keep saying I'm going to shut this off just because I'm, I, I'm nervous. I'm so nervous, but there's no need to be nervous. Okay, I'm going to add machines here. Um, the h most high demand item inside this reactor is going to be the copper plates, the dense copper plates. So I want, I want to have a constant supply of copper in the system at all time. And I'm almost positive that I, I can get away with just two furnaces. Um, I'm going to try, I don't want to use an induction furnace. Um, I'll just use a, an electric furnace. We're going to need a macerator. Okay. We're going to need a compressor. And that should be it. And that should be all the machines that we'll need. Um, let me see. I think the mass raiders are slower. So three. Three is a good idea. Okay. So one, two, three. And then... No, 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 no. 
I don't need a macerator because I'm making the dust straight from you. You. We're gonna go straight to furnaces. Okay. Um. I'm gonna do four furnaces, and I'm gonna do. I knew I grabbed something wrong. Where is that thing? Compressor. Four furnaces and one macerator. And I'm placing these so the orientation is correct. Somebody's blowing up YouTube while I'm making this. Probably shouldn't be. Someone said I'm right about needing a color code. Okay. <sighs> Alright, so the macerator is for coal into coal dust if you didn't put those together yet. And these are going to be turning all the copper dust into copper bars. And the reason I have so many is because, again, you need tons and tons of tons of copper. It's absolutely ridiculous. If you try to build a reactor or an advanced reactor without the help of AE or some type of auto-crafting rig, whether it be Red Power 2 or some jury-rigged Monkey McBean machine, um, it it's just it takes forever and you, you just have to keep going back and getting stacks and stacks and stacks of copper um, so while I'm here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade these machines with both overclockers and overclockers and transformers okay and yes I do understand that these put a much larger tax on the system so, this is one of those things that I can dial back if we've exceeded our our limits of practicality. Um, these just require a lot of electronic circuits. Nick, what am I doing? Okay, I can't get that right. There we go. Two here. Eight there. Done. Done 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 surprisingly I haven't blown anything up in this tutorial yet which is absolutely amazing because I'm constantly blowing things up constantly blowing things up okay this is gonna take care of all of our copper and coal and I also need to make sure that something is taking care of this needs to be backwards something is taking care of tin so we're gonna do tin production here um, we don't need a lot because for every four tin we're going to get um, eight cells. So that doesn't need to be very fast. The copper is the system that needs to be fast. Um, again, I'm trying to conserve energy here. Um, the compressor, don't think I want more than one compressor. Um, and I have something in mind for these spaces here. Okay, let's put the upgrades in these machines. Eight and two. Put the upgrades in there. Okay, these things these things are set to be wired. So we'll wire them up with power by reconnecting this here. And let's see if we hear an explosion. We don't. Let's see if we get that lovely yes. Okay. So these are these are ready to go, wired up. And these aren't going to be running all the time, so this is not going to be a major power concern um, as far as the system getting taxed. Um, let me see, I am a slightly worried about this. Okay, change of plans. Oh shoot, no, I have one right here. This is for tin. Coal dust, coal dust. Coal dust needs to be used twice. Coal dust is one of the slowest producing things. For some reason, it just takes so long to macerate that crap. Um, but in any case, I, I, I need so little of it. That's not that's not necessary. So let me load these back up. Okay. Uh, did anyone notice that this machine didn't blow up? <laughs> I got lucky somehow. Okay. That should be wired in properly. And if I do want to add any machines, I'm going to need to make sure I disconnect this, which it's already disconnected, conveniently enough. 
Um, so here we go. Three, three, I'm counting wall spaces. I have more machines to add. More machines to add. More machines. More machines. Mm, what if I did this? What if I put the compressor on the wall up here? And what's this? A furnace for tin? Okay. I'm going to make some signs just so I have this straight in my head. And so you guys can remember what's in my head. So we have copper, 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 coal dust, uranium, tin. Okay. Um, Oops. Macerator up here. Furnace down. <laughs> <laughs> the captain has spoken too soon. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I blew something up. Okay. So that copper wasn't lowercase or wasn't uppercase anyway. That's probably why it happened. That's what I'll blame. Okay. Um, nice row of furnace in the bottom, one compressor, one macerator, and again, I don't need a lot of these because um, the system doesn't demand very much of it. Okay? Fantastic. What? Are you kidding me? I just got really nervous. I broke a wire. The wire was broken in here because some stupid glitch. All right. The captain has made an observation. That turns out not to be true. Okay. This thing, it's just remote. Okay, it's just... Here's what just happened inside my head. I thought for a second that I didn't actually need to connect that thing with a redstone signal and that because it had a card inside, it would automatically shut off the reactor and send a signal straight to the reactor, which is not true. That was a mouthful. I'm sorry. Um, just had a little war inside my head there for a minute. So this shut off when it should be on. All systems are go. <laughs> All right, let's get back to whatever I'm doing and try not to break stuff. This is wrong because it's not facing the right direction. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, okay. I am not really happy with that, but okay. So there we go. I have everything lined out in my head. These signs are for nothing. They were mainly for you guys. I hope you appreciate them. Now we're going to do some buses. Get some more buses up and running here. The short bus, the long bus. All right, bam, 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 bam. Well, I'm way too lazy to get a wrench. There we go. See how that worked out very nicely. Let me go up here. I'm going to hold space bar and try to hit shift. And put those down. Okay. I'm going to put import buses because this stuff is all coming back out of the system through here. I'm going to try to maintain a short cable, which doesn't really matter too much, I guess. Um, I think I would like this better if they were on the outsides. Does that make sense? Does anyone see what I'm going to do here? If they were just facing the right direction, which originally I thought they probably wouldn't be in the right direction. Um, one more time. One more time. Okay. Compressor is going to go here. Um, let me knock out that wall. Come on the other side. 
put a compressor there. It's facing towards me. Output's on the right, which translates into the output on the left here. Okay. Import bus here. Import bus here. That saves us a little bit of cable. Maybe not much. Cable up here. Export bus. We're going to redo this. Oh, Captain. You idiot. Idiot! What have you done? Oh, goodness gracious. Well, I guess this is all uh, inclusive in a Let's Play, so... What my mistake is that I can't get power to these machines without breaking the symmetry of the entire complex. So, there we go. I'm going to put that back. We're going to leave this the way it is. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. I could care less. I want to put the compressor in macerator over here okay oh, we're gonna just stick to the original plan let's not get too creative here we already had this lined up okay macerator coal compressor refined uranium tin copper 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 all right just need a cable here to connect this to the system I need to wire this in to the system. Okay, very nice. Comes down the center. Ooh, let's do that. I like that. Okay. All right. So, ready to go. I am going to need UU matter because, 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 because. Because of the wonderful things he does. Um, I'm going to need UU Matter because I can't create any of the necessary materials. Except for coal dust to um, make these thingamajiggers here. So I am trying to spawn in as little of the raw materials that are going to go inside the reactor as possible. Just because I wanted to see a nice transition from um, getting a breeder reactor online and filling a reactor as efficiently as possible. But what I'm actually going to end up doing right here is I'm going to spawn in some some UU matter. I'm going to take I'm going to take two stacks, and I'm going to actually put them where they belong. Okay, I'm going to put UU matter inside of here, and this thing now, if I have I have uh, always active. Let's see. It's going to take UU matter. It's going to know how to craft lapis lazuli. Okay, now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to change this to move. I'm going to do I'm going to do I'm going to do always craft, okay? So now this is going to start filling up. Oh, it filled up too quick, okay? It's going to use some of that UU matter and uh didn't use a lot. It's going to use some of that UU and it's going to keep that full all the time. So that's something I really shouldn't have to worry about anymore. Um what I'm also going to do is I'm going to start setting up some of these things here and I'm going to break this just for right now. Okay, so I can set it to inject some of the stuff. So I'm going to have it inject copper dust. Um, forgot the most important part here is these level emitters. Oh my. Okay. There we go. Oh, this is kind of cool. It's different. Um, all right, these level emitters are going to... Um, do something very specific, okay? I'm not hooked up to the system. So I'm going to say always craft copper dust and dump it in here. And it's only going to be active we'll say without a signal, okay? So always craft I flipped it back. Active without a signal. And I'll explain what this is doing. If you're not sure, in a second, and we'll just get to see it in action. It's the best way to explain it. Um, 
Tin dust. Always craft. Okay. These are gonna these are gonna craft tin dust with UU matter and jam it into the system here. And actually it's gonna have to be move single items and craft, okay? And there's a definite reason for that. It's because of how much of this the UU matter recipe makes at one time. It's gonna cause excess. And the move single items craft is going to take excess from the system before it actually crafts. So, so that's actually fairly important right there. Um, so we're telling it to inject that. Now the level emitter. Um, we want to have it always injecting copper. If I have less than... Oh, let me just do, let me just do some math here. Okay, you need 8 copper bars per dense copper plate okay and you need one den you need three dense copper plates per four quad uranium cells so three dense copper plates per one quad uranium cell I'm sorry because let's let me look at the pattern here okay no I'm sorry that's a that's a not true three dense copper plates here and one here so I need four so we have four dense copper plates, and they need eight bars each. So that's 32 um, bars per quad uranium cell. And let me just go ahead and count how many. Again, I'm, I'm going for efficiency here. Um, four, eight, 12, 13, 16, 18, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Okay, so 40. There's 40 cells. So 40 quad uranium cells using um, 32 bars of copper each is going to make it so we need 1,280 copper in the system at all times. Okay. 1,280, 1,280, 1,280 when there's less than... Oh, how did I set this up? 1,280 is the number of copper bars that I need to make all the dense copper plates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say copper bars if there's less than Actually, you know what? That's way too much. That's way too much. I'm going to I'm going to put the brakes in this system a little bit. So let's say 256. Um, it's going to emit when levels are above limit. So when it when there's more than 256 copper bars in the system, it's going to send a signal to the import bus, and this is only active without a signal, and that reverses it and shuts it off. Okay, so 256, 256 emit when above 256 emit when above. And then we're going to do the same thing with um, with tin. And I just have to make sure that I use the right recipe again. Um, that's 30247. Here it is. No, 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 no. 30247. Um, since we need so few of this, there's not really going to be a need to have too much. So when we have, when we have less than, let's say, now, when we have more than 64 in the system, it's going to emit when... Yeah, we'll do 128. It's cheap. Um, emit when levels are above, and that will shut off because that's set to be always active. And this, this is going to pull out of the system. And in theory, when I connect this... There we go. I love when theories... Oh, hold on. That one has no power, but these should be fine which I'm having a hard time clicking on. <clears throat> All right, it's going to export copper dust. Active without a signal. It's not getting the signal. This knows how to make copper dust. With UU matter, I still have UU matter in the system. The big question is why is it not throwing the resources. 
Why is it not throwing the resources? Okay, let's connect that, first of all. And it initially dumped one in there. This doesn't make sense to me right now. I'm going to have to think about it for a second. It's going to... Maybe it has to be... Maybe it has to be always craft items. No? How could that be true? Always active. This is where a live feed would sure come in handy. Be able to figure out what the frick is going on here. Everything's hooked up, okay? The ME system knows how to make copper dust with three UU matter. Unless I'm just I just have these set backwards. Emit when levels are above limit. So it should emit a signal and this is only active without a signal. It's gonna import copper dust. Why you no import the copper dust? Alright, in any case, um, this is actually a good place to stop because we're fairly far into it. And I need to figure out that problem for sure. And I'll let you know what I come up with. Probably some of you already know what the issue is. Um, I'm going to turn off my breeder. Okay, I'm going to log off so I don't lose a lot of power. See, this is getting taxed, but it is keeping up, which is what that wants. Okay. All right, very good. We've made some progress here. We've heated up the breeder. We've added an automatic cutoff. We've added this ridiculous um, Tesseract in here, which I did not plan on putting at all um, with the remote power core. And um, we saw what was inside the reactor, okay? Um, next episode, we'll fix that problem there, and we'll start auto-crafting some of the supplies or most of the supplies that we'll need to fill up this, this uh, main reactor. And then we'll begin to hook up these scrap machines so that I can actually make my own UE matter at a fairly decent clip. Uh, thhanks for watching, guys. Make sure you check out our website, theminecrafters.com. Check us out on Facebook. We're theminecrafters.com on Facebook as well. This is Captain Jack. As always, guys, stay poised.